Hi everyone, this video will show you an amalgam procedure from the perspective of the dental assistant. We have our amalgam tray already set up and the tooth has been prepared. We will be working on tooth number 19. It's a class two restoration, MO preparation. Our instruments are set up in order. We already have a matrix band on the tooth. We have our amalgam capsules here and given the doctor's signal, we are ready to mix. The different capsules, we have a capsule that needs to be activated. You would push this plunger in until it's pressed in all the way. And we also have self-activating capsules that when they're placed in the triturator or the amalgamator, they mix automatically without us having to squeeze or activate the capsule. I'll activate this one, just squeeze it together. You can either squeeze it in your hands or press it on the countertop. Activating it will allow the mercury liquid and the powdered alloy made of silver, tin, copper, and zinc to mix in the triturator. Lift the lid up, open up, the holding device. For the rotomix, you just turn it and then release, and it will squeeze the capsule inside the ends there. Close your lid. Make sure you've selected the proper time for your type of amalgam, and press start. When it's finished, lift your lid and remove your capsule. To open your capsule, twist and pull and let the amalgam fall into your well, or if you're using a squeeze cloth, let it fall onto your squeeze cloth. Take your carrier and load the amalgam into your carrier. I like to hold the well firmly in one hand as I press the carrier into the mix with the other. If you're using a double-ended carrier, make sure you fill both ends. Once you have filled your carrier, we deliver it to the dentist. Before I do that, I wanna show you what these look like. So we pack the amalgam into the carrier. When the doctor dispenses it into the preparation, they get a nice solid cylinder of amalgam that they can then pack in to the preparation. So the goal for the assistant is to pack this firmly enough that you get nice solid cylinders. Crumbly mixes will just fall out. So when you hold these carriers upside down, your amalgam mix should not fall out. So I'll just reload this quickly. You have a limited time to work with your amalgam. This is a fast set amalgam. When you deliver your carrier, deliver it in the direction of use. So if we're working on a mandibular tooth, which we are, face your carrier downwards. And if it's double-ended, deliver the small end to the doctor. Of course, I don't have a doctor here, but this does just fine to represent what the doctor does. They hold their hand out and we deliver. Return to your tray. The doctor will need the condenser next. Once the filling is in the prep, they have to pack it. Again, deliver the small end first, unless your doctor specifies otherwise. Stick out your pinky to retrieve the used instrument and deliver the new instrument firmly into their hand. While they are condensing, we return to our well and we repack. Communicate with your operator. Let them know if you're getting to the end of your amalgam material. They will let you know if you need to make another mix. Return 
to the doctor, take the old instrument with your pinky, take, tuck, and deliver. Stay close because as soon as they dispense the amalgam, they'll need the condenser back. Take, tuck, deliver. If the doctor signals that they need another mixture of amalgam, remove any remaining pieces that are in your well or squeeze cloth. That way the old mix does not interfere with the new mix. You'll get two different set times if you combine them. Take your next capsule, load it into your triturator. Some of the triturators that we have shake pretty vigorously, so I always like to hold the lid on them. For this capsule, pull it apart and let the contents fall into your well. With this one, we have some pieces inside. What does the mixing is this pestle, and you may find a diaphragm, a plastic piece that separates the mercury from the powder in the capsule until we're ready to mix. Take those out and then you can load your carrier. Now this mix is a little harder. This is an older amalgam. I'm using some old ones. You can see how crumbly it is. It's not shiny. So this is an older amalgam. At school we don't go through these very often so we don't get to use them up before they expire. Load both ends, re-deliver to your operator. Take the old instrument, tuck, deliver the new item. Remember they're going to need the condenser back right away. Take, tuck, deliver. Once the doctor places as much filling material into the preparation as necessary, we're done delivering the carrier. If you have material left in your carrier, empty it out at this point before it hardens. There are some times where assistants forget, it goes through the autoclave and you're stuck with a, um, a solid chunk of amalgam in your carriers. The trick to get it out, you could either drill it out or the trick is to heat it up and press. But heating up amalgam is not a great idea because of the mercury vapors that can be released with it. So just empty it out before you take your instruments to sterilization. Now that the amalgam is in place, it's actually overflowing. The doctor needs to carve the anatomy back into the tooth. Depending on your doctor and their preference, they're either going to start with the occlusal carver so a cleoid discoid or a tanner carver they would use. But some doctors I've noticed that I work with now prefer using a burnisher to start out with. So we have a ball football burnisher. I will, traditional method, what my original dentist used, carver first. Take the old instrument, deliver the carver in the direction of use. As they're using the carver, we suction. Without cheeks, of course this is very easy on a mannequin, but your HVEs are very strong. Use them to retract the patient's cheek or use your finger to get into their cheek to retract. Place your HVE where you'll pick up the most scrap amalgam that's being carved off of the tooth. When they are done carving, they'll probably ask for the burnisher. Take away the cleoid discoid, deliver the burnisher to your doctor. Keep your HVE in position. You'll need to suction as they burnish the restoration. Keep the carver in your hand because they may need it back. 
So this is where your single-handed instrument transfer will come in handy because we still need to suction as they are doing their work. So, so you might pass the cleoid discoid and the ball burnisher back and forth a few times with your operator. Once the doctor is done carving and polishing the occlusal surface, because this is a proximal restoration, they will need to carve the interproximal surface. To do that, they need an interproximal carver, so I just passed a Hollenbeck carver. Before they can get to the interproximal space, we have to remove the matrix system. If you are the one removing the matrix system, keep your finger over the occlusal surface of the tooth, loosen your outer knob, and pull the retainer off, leaving behind the band and the wedge. Use your cotton pliers to remove the wedge from the lingual side. and then carefully lift your band up, being careful not to break out the restoration that was just placed. Once the band is removed, we can return to suctioning while the doctor is carving the interproximal surface. Once the interproximal surface is carved, we can then check the occlusion and the contacts. To check the occlusion, use your articulating paper and forceps and the patient bites and taps. If the doctor sees any blue spots, any marking paper spots on that restoration, they will continue to carve those high spots down. Because this is a proximal restoration, the doctor will also want to floss that contact area. And the doctor prefers doing this themselves because they'd like to feel how the floss passes through the contact area. To pass floss, hold it at both ends and the doctor will take the floss just within from where you're holding it. Once the restoration is complete, we can give the patient a complete mouth rinse, caution them on any numbing they receive so they don't bite their lip or cheek while they're still numb. And we can give them any post-op instructions on how to care for their new restoration. At the end of the procedure, when you're ready to clean up your materials, any leftover scrap amalgam and anything that was in contact with the heavy metals, the mercury and silver, needs to be recycled properly. Follow your local and state ordinances Offices today must have amalgam separators to keep these materials out of the water supply. So it is okay to suction this using your HVE device. However, keep in mind that will fill up those traps much faster. If you don't have an amalgam separator or you don't want to fill up those traps too quickly, store this and any other items like your used capsules, your used pestles and diaphragms in a sealable container. Store those until they're full and then you can call the appropriate waste hauler to recycle your hazardous waste. All right, I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching.